One thing about my experience with grief is the way that it shifted perceptions from my perceptions of just the world and everything from SpongeBob SquarePants to Final Destination. Riley died and that became a uh, option that's available to the people that I've played Super Smash Brothers with. Um, and that's a, that's a big shift and it makes things really real in a way that you can only know when they are really real. And then also just, um, the acknowledgement that like Riley's death was this specific set of circumstances and a long complex thing. And it's not just one day affair. Um, and it's going to take a long time to unpack everything and kind of, I'm going to be constantly shifting my own thoughts and my own meaning and my own understanding. And that's okay. Um, but it's just really annoying instantly. Like seeing knives edge and cliffs edges everywhere when in a lot of ways, I'm honestly doing okay. Like not great. Um, and still not great. And that's annoying. It's a whole year, but through this all, like I've felt very supported and, um, yeah, we'll see what happens with my report card coming up, my grief report card, but I'm, I'm okay, but it's interesting trying to understand some of the way that I've changed or I'm not okay in the best ways and things I want to improve. So switching from the SpongeBob SquarePants to Final Destination, just like SpongeBob, it's a, a rambunctious show for sure. There's lots of screaming. There's lots of extreme things that happen like people get crushed by rocks and that's always the funny thing about like kids media and stuff is it's like oh yeah that person's dead that person would be dead um but it's silly and it's done lightheartedly and it's animated and it's this ridiculous thing that isn't real um and then yeah once death kind of came it's like oh okay things are real and like i'm worried about every tiny little thing and I see any hint of sadness or loneliness out in the world, and I catastrophize. That's something I am very good at doing. Um, and it's just this instant shift. Um, and both of them are kind of untrue. Um, but, yeah, I think about it a lot. And the experience of fear within safety and within um, knowing you're okay is spongebob you can scream your head off you can have a great time you get that rush and that's what a lot of like risk um and recklessness and uh adrenaline seeking which is very much not who i am but very much is who riley is like that's the thrill and that's the rush um but i think the experience of like fear and dread in the really intense full of consequences world where people die and people have increased in intense suffering. That's not screaming your head off kind of fear. That's deep within and constant dread and happening to people who look fine on the outside or who are ignoring it or believing it doesn't exist. Um, and that's the hard stuff. And that's also the more real stuff that I don't think it's talked about as much. And it is something that I feel like before Riley died, I was better at kind of mining into those spaces. Like, okay, this maybe happened in March or something. It was when I was like, my sleep schedule was awful. I had to get to work early and I get off of I five and I turn right onto Nyberg road. Um, and it's like in the morning and I'm always trying to turn right on red because I'm already running late and I am looking to the left. I do a couple right looks and no, there's no cars that way. I'm going to another lane and I like, okay, there's an opening and there's a dude crossing the street and I almost hit him. Like not really. I didn't hit him at all, but it very easily could have happened and I wasn't like paying enough attention. And I think this is something that I would have like made a slob core about that night. Um, but just in the state I was in the grief and the sadness, like, oh my gosh, am I like not on top of it enough to where a dangerous level? 
And the answer is like, I guess a little bit. And also just driving cars is a dangerous thing. And like, there's lots of ways we can be distracted. And I will defend myself. I'm a great driver. Like, I really have not had many issues or accidents or uh, things where I was at fault. Um, but anyway, but the road is filled with everyone and you can get unlucky and it's pretty scary. I'm glad I didn't hit that guy, but I'm a little, I wonder why I like, I think it was too real. It was too scary and too like, oh my gosh, I'm doing bad and I might, I don't want to broadcast out to the world how bad I'm doing. So I don't want people to worry about me, but oh no, because I'm not doing that. I'm actually being a faker. Am I actually not showing myself and, uh. I think the answer is everything's a little bit true, um, but that's just also where I was, and there's no, <laughs> there's no expectation or need for me to always be completely forthright with the hard stuff. Um, but I'm glad that I feel like I've integrated my grief to a point where I can kind of zoom out a little bit, which is something that I've really struggled to do. Um, yeah, so anyway, I ate this, the remains of my biscuit pot pie, and it was delicious. See ya.